Real Estate Radio starts right now. Welcome back to Houston Real Estate Radio. I want to continue the conversation we were having last segment with Ian Faria. He is a director in the construction and real estate section of the law firm Coates Rose. And he's been talking to us, gives, giving us some great information, uh, consumer information, um, from a real estate perspective on new construction homes and um, kind of how you as a consumer have some rights when you're purchasing a home and how to go about getting things fixed if you have problems with that new home. So I want to start uh, talking about uh, warranties because when you buy a home, a new home, um, you normally get your one-year warranty and that builder will come out and fix whatever the issues are during that first year. After that first year, um, you normally continue to have a warranty, but the warranty changes. So tell us about that. Sure. And that's a great point. One of the things that I see in my practice is uh, I have an opportunity to meet with a lot of homeowners who are buying oftentimes their first home. And one of the things that they look for, especially when they're working with a big production builder, is they want name recognition and someone that's going to stand behind them. And of course, what I'm asked to do is take a look at the worst scenario. The worst case scenario that comes out there is your builder goes out of business, your builder disappears, or your builder doesn't disappear. He just decides, I don't care about your problem anymore. What do you do? Well, one of the one of the easiest things that you can do is when you're buying a home is to make sure you get a really good third party warranty. And the one of the things I'm constantly telling my clients is make sure you read it before you agree to either pay for it or to be bound by it. And the reason why is there are multiple kinds of third party warranties that are out there. And some of them are great. A lot of them aren't. A lot of times what I've seen is a third party warranty that said that, that when you read it, the first page, it says, we're going to warranty your house for you. The second page says, here are all the things that, that are going to be warrantable. And here's if it's a defect, we're, this is how you'll know it's a defect. But when you read the kind of the fine print at the end, what it says is, but oh, by the way, we're not going to pay to fix it. But we'll act as a third-party neutral to communicate between you and the builder, and hopefully the builder will fix it. <laughs> hopefully doesn't sound good. <laughs> and no, it doesn't. That doesn't give me a lot of warm fuzzies on the you know on the inside right. if I'm a homeowner. Right. And so, but there is resolution. Uh, obviously, again, you can always go to your legal counsel, follow Chapter 27 of the Property Code, put put on your notice letters, and if you have to, file a lawsuit or go through arbitration. But more importantly, we'd hope to even avoid that. When you're at your closing or before your closing, you're going to have an opportunity to read your sample warranty package, the one that the builder gives you. And if you've bought a third-party warranty, what the third-party warranty company is going to give. The thing I always tell a lot of my clients is make sure it says the words insured. If it says insured, that generally is going to mean that the, the third-party warranty company will pay to fix the defect or the problem if the builder won't. And then they will go argue with the builder over who's responsible. And if that builder's out of business, they'll still correct it. Yes, they will. And then that's just their burden to go after that builder if the builder's filed bankruptcy, left the state, or done whatever. So it's got to it's got to be an insured warranty. That's the main thing. That's what I look for. And um, the warranty's really as good as the builder. It is, and I, I will tell you, reputation's a big thing, right? It, it is. I, I will tell you, I have worked with a lot of very well-known production builders in in this state and in this city, and they are just as good as their word. Uh, but and just like we we said moments ago, a lot of them will, will absolutely be proactive and work with you to make sure there's no problems because they don't want to be coming back either. Right. They want you to be happy with a house and go tell your friends to come buy a house in the neighborhood. Absolutely <laughs> they do because their their best their best advertising is you going out there mm-hmm. telling about what a great product you have. Right. Yep, that is true. So now the warranty when you sell the house, let's say after two, three years you sell the house, does that warranty transfer to the new buyer? It sure does. The warranty that your builder gave you does transfer to what we in the legal terms call a subsequent purchaser. Okay. As well as your third party warranty will usually is transferable as well okay so you know any any prospective buyer of your house will have the same kind of confidence that you do based on 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 what you're selling to them and it also depends on how old the house is because as you know you know the home builders they only warranty the house for so long you know you you know you have one year kind of the bumper to bumper all things are covered and then you generally have a two-year warranty on all the mechanicals like your your hvac system your plumbing Mm -hmm. 
and then you're going to have a 10-year warranty on load bearing or structural matters like your foundation so once you're past 10 years well actually really the major issue is once you're past about two two or three years you're kind of on your own which is why you really want to have a third-party warranty to cover those issues that are that arise okay and when we do uh resell purchases normally the the home buyer does get a new warranty either the seller purchases it for them or the the buyer purchases it themselves um do you recommend those warranties i do again with the only the only issue being read the sample ahead of time and make sure it's a warranty that's insured that says that it's going to pay if the if the if the if the seller can't okay because in those situations you're obviously not going to be necessarily going after the builder Mm -hmm. you're going to be you know your concern would be what didn't the seller tell me yeah. What did they, they conceal? Didn't disclose something. What did they disclose on you know on that disclosure form right. before you bought it? Yeah. And you know we talked about there are some fabulous builders in our area. We talk about all the time on the show how great our builder community is, um, and GHBA. Uh, what a great supporter they are in the community. They do so much to give back. Um, just a lot of great uh, builders that give a lot to our. Com- to our community and and help our community and we're going to talk about some of those programs um on our veterans day show so um there's some great ones out there but there are some that are kind of the fly by night so how does a consumer uh, need to vet a builder i can't speak more positively about doing your own due diligence you as a consumer you can check with the better business bureau you can check with the local chamber of commerce uh, I think a great resource, especially here in Houston, is contacting the Greater Houston Builders Association. Um, I've been I've been working with them for over ten years, been a member myself. I think they're fantastic. Uh, additionally, uh, you can also search the local records. Uh, you know, the real estate records they're online. You can go see what they own, what they don't own, as far as lots. Uh, you will see the bank notes and deeds and things of that nature, so you can have an understanding. As well as it's a little bit more cumbersome, but you may want to hire an attorney to do a court record search to find how many times they've been sued who who's been suing them the homeowners their subcontractors are they not paying their bills Mm -hmm. there's a lot of different things you can do but for most people buying a home is the single largest investment they'll make in their lifetime yeah why wouldn't you want to spend a a little bit more money or a little bit more time making sure you're getting the right one so let's talk about build on your own lot a lot of people are doing that these days they find the lot that they want and purchase it and then they um they go and get either a construction loan or they have the cash to build the home um and they find a custom home builder to to build for them um any advice that you would give them yes Uh, and that's a great great question is that number one I cannot stress enough that they need to have the contract reviewed because the contract that that custom builder will give you, I can almost guarantee will only be favoring the builder and not you as the homeowner, the person paying for this. That's number one. Number two, there's, there's certain little hidden things in those contracts. The first one that I I would want, I point to most people is there's likely going to be a waiver of a jury trial and a, and, and, and a, an obligation to go to arbitration. I would almost uniformly strike that provision because if you do have a dispute with this person, with this company, you would much rather have 12 people in your community make that decision than you would an arbitrator who's getting paid by both you and the builder, who's more likely than not to split the baby. (laughs) On top of that, I think one of the most critical aspects is payment schedules. Uh, And what I mean by that more specifically is there's always going to be a draw series, Mm -hmm. uh, depending on how many the stages of construction. And what I want to, what I always tell my clients is that you can, especially when there's a construction loan, because the bank will require that before they distribute funds, that the bank will want to come out and inspect the property. The bank's not doing that for you. The bank is not concerned about whether or not you're satisfied with the construction. What they're making sure is that is their asset, the one thing that they can sell to satisfy the construction loan, is it there and is it going up the way it's supposed to? Right. So... Along those lines, what I always tell my clients is hire your own inspector, make sure they're inspecting the work as work progresses, and then more importantly, take a look at the draw request schedule and make sure that you require that 10% retainage be withheld from every draw request. And the reason why is that in Texas, if you withhold retainage, if there ends up becoming a dispute over liens or other items, those subcontractors are only going to be able to recover their pro rata share out of that retainage. 
That and, yeah, that is that is good to know. And also lean releases, you want to have those. Absolutely critical. You you not only want to have a partial lean release that you know that's on the periodic payments that you make, but you want a final lean release that demonstrates that all bills have been paid and that all work's been completed and that they have no claims against your household. Fantastic. Thanks for joining us today, Ian. Appreciate it. Lots of great information for consumers out there. Thanks for tuning into Houston Real Estate Radio, where we bring you guests and information that you can use in your next real estate transaction. If you have a real estate question, you can call us anytime at 281-882-8088. And anything that we talk about on air, you can always go to HoustonRealEstateRadio.com to get more information about it. Join us next week, 2 p.m., for more information you can use here on Houston Real Estate Radio.